So we are moving into our second image layer. In order to help that out, I moved my sketch, a copy of my sketch up to the top and I set it at 30% opacity and locked it. And so far I'm marking them green as I place them. I've got the setting sun in there and I got some atmosphere. At any time I can decide I want to move that up a little bit. I think I actually will. So I want that sun to appear behind the high mountains. Then I've got these high mountains. I haven't rasterized it yet. I just want to make it kind of the right size. So this is the kind of high mountain ridge. I want that sun right behind. I can play with opacity on it and see how that's already going to blend with the sun I have. And if I think that's a good arrangement, then good. And I have to decide what do I want to cut out. So this is usually what I do. I'm going to turn off that top sketch just so you can see it clearly. I just take my lasso and I just rough cut it out. So I'm going to give lots of overlap on that sky. I even like some of those clouds, so I might even keep some of those. And then I don't really need these foreground shadows, but I'll keep some of these foreground rocks just in case. It's always good to have a lot of overlap. So what I do is I lasso around what I want to keep. Instead of deleting now, because if I delete, that's going to erase what I want and say that I need to, to turn it into a rasterized image. What I do is I lasso around what I want, and then I hit Command-J. And Command-J will duplicate what I want onto a new layer, and it will automatically rasterize it. The benefit of that is I get to keep my smart layer. If I ever want to go back to that reference and pull something at full resolution, I can. But that's a good placement. Later on, if I decide I want to, to adjust this further, I can use Command T. I can flip it horizontally. I can do all kinds of things. I can warp it. I could push the horizon up a little bit more on this side and down on this side just to make it look a little more alien. Lots I can do, but it has to be rasterized in order to do any of that. And then, of course, later on, I might go in and really carefully start blending this sky with that sun. So once you've done a rough cut with your lasso, then you can go in with your eraser. And I'm going to use a 100% eraser, but I'm going to use it at a 0% hardness. Fairly large. And then I can start getting rid of that hard edge seam. But we're not going to do really tight cutouts until we've also adjusted the color and the lighting. Because that can do a lot to help like these the blues of the sky to match. Maybe I want to darken the background or maybe I want to lighten up and add a yellow to this foreground or this uh tall mountain sky. But I do recommend this step. So after you've cut it out with your lasso and you've duplicated, use a soft edge to 100% eraser and get rid of the seam. Blend the seam a little bit. Like that. I don't need to worry about it on the bottom because all of that's going to get covered up. Okay, so that one is now placed. So next, more mountains. Now this seems like it's even further behind. And I might want to rotate it and use it differently. So what do I actually want to use? I want to use this big mountain peak. Don't need the lake, don't need all of this. So I lasso around what I want to keep, and then I hit Command-J, and I turn off the smart layer. 
Now I'm going to move it behind my other layer. So I think this will be a far background mountain. And then I might want to warp it. I want to pay attention to the lighting, the direction of the light. So that matches. And I'm thinking about my sketch composition. Like, where can this go that's effective and believable? So maybe like there. I might also draw, use my guides pulling with my move tool from my ruler, kind of recreating the edges of my composite. Because I might make it a little bit taller than my original sketch, just based on my references. So then I have that one placed behind. I cut it out with the lasso. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. It needs a lot of lighting and color work, but I'm going to use my soft eraser at 100% opacity, but 0% hardness. And I'm going to soften that transition on the seam, which makes it a lot more usable. And I can fine tune that later. But on these tall background, deep in the atmosphere peaks, it's going to look like mist coming off of the, the mountaintops. And then I can try erasing around from in front of it a little bit. So this is all just compositing by using a soft edged eraser. Which can be pretty effective. Just using that eraser to blend in this isn't a finishing technique. I, I want to be careful not to go too far and actually erase content I want later. But for blending skies, for blending the sun, this can be a helpful technique. The twin setting suns. <laughs> All right, moving on from here. I noticed that my image is still called screenshot 2022. This was my sketch's name, right? So I have not saved it since bringing in all of these images. So I want to go to file, save as, and you really, you want to do this as soon as you have more than one layer. And I want to do save as my name. I'm going to do my semester code, my name, and then assignment one and a description. And I'll save it. Usually, I tell you guys save it to your desktop. My desktop's a mess, so I'm going to save it to my assignment one folder. And it's always a good idea. I hit F11, and I can make sure that it's there in my assignment one folder. And while I'm here, and I'm trying to stay organized, so there's my PSD. It's coming in. I just finished my exercise two and so I swapped the the folder icon for that with the picture so this is what we've accomplished so far we did the line jumble we did the vector shapes now we're going to work on our fantasy landscape this is my working format there it is so whenever I want to return to it now all I have to do is hit command s and it will save it and update it and it's got all these different layers and smart objects already embedded. My next high mountain is this fortress thing, which I'm thinking I want to put into this corner. Turn on my sketch. 
use command T, push it a little bit higher than what I had in my sketch. And what's nice is my sketch uses that tree trunk to kind of naturally seam together between these. I'll put it actually about right there. All right, now that it's going to pose some problems using that with all that ice. So how can I figure out what I really want? I'm just going to do a rough cutout with my lasso. I know those people are going to get erased, but for right now, I'll just leave them in. If you need to move your selection while you're using the lasso, you can hold down the space bar and you'll get what's called the hand tool. And that just helps you navigate your screen. And then I can continue with my lasso. Get the sky. Command plus will zoom in. Command minus will zoom out. So Command T will allow you to enlarge with the transform box. And now that I have it, I have it kind of placed. I'm going to use my soft edged 100% eraser and I'm going to get rid of that seam. Being careful not to delete any of the pixels I want to keep. Uh, the poor research scientist that has to live there. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and do it on the bottom edge as well. Go ahead and get rid of these people. And because it's all organic, sometimes you can get lucky and things blend pretty well without too much alteration. Okay. So I'm going to consider that placed. And all that gets covered up in my tree trunk anyway. What comes next? Let's see. Ah, oh, the middle ground. So this can be the most tricky, figuring out how to integrate your middle ground plate. I'm going to do this one. This one's further back. First, like what do I want to include? Where do I want to include it? Especially with the reflective water, if I choose to use that. So basically, I want to rough cut out the sky. And that's the only part I don't need. So again, I'm going to take my lasso. I'll grab a lot of this atmospheric cloud material. Hold down spacebar to move through it. In fact, I might even grab more. Why not grab all of that? Bring it all the way down. I've circled with my lasso what I want to keep. I hit Command J. I turn off the smart layer. And now I'm going to use my soft edged eraser at 100% opacity and just take that seam down. <laughs> 